Hello and welcome. This is Jürgen Feist from the IBSS Institute. Um, hello and welcome to our today's webinar about highly condensed dashboard visuals. It's not too much a surprise that we have so much attention for this uh, webinar today. Probably you've seen on, on uh, LinkedIn that there has been huge interest in this webinar, more than 400 people being interested and 250 around that even registered then on Eventbrite. Um, so really a, a big, big uh, crowd here. The reason why, why we are not that surprised is that we had a similar speech at the annual conference. So you probably remember the IPCS annual conference in June. And um, there we have been talking about dashboarding. We have been talking about storytelling. And in the introductory um, lesson, Rolf has got... 20 minutes or 15 minutes around that to talk about information density, that information density is so important for both dashboarding and storytelling. And the feedback we got is that we need some more time to talk about that topic. And this is the reason why I've been setting up um, this webinar today. Information density is probably the most difficult and maybe also the most controversial topic of the success formula of the international business communication standards. And um, so we want to have a closer look at that. And it's not me giving you that closer look, but it's my valued partner, Rolf Hichert, who uh, will be with us today and giving the presentation. And uh, my job um, will be to moderate that session, to answer your questions and so on, probably to discuss some topics directly with Rolf. So Rolf, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, okay, you are. Can you, can you also, ah, here he is. Okay. Okay. Welcome Rolf Fischert. Uh, you probably know that guy, and for those who do not know him yet, Rolf Hichert is the founding father of the International Business Communication Standards, started 20 years ago telling people that they should follow certain rules to have better understandable reports and dashboards. So welcome, Rolf Hichert, and uh, I'm glad that we can talk about highly condensed dashboard visuals. Okay, um, Jürgen. Uh, I, I'd like to start with the title and try to explain what we are really up to today. It's actually two things. If we want to go for highly condensed dashboards, we need some kind of notation rules, some kind of notation concept. And we will finish uh, this session with this idea that highly condensed dashboards only work if we have some rules. Otherwise, we don't understand it. Um, let me let me start, let's say, a uh, little cartoon, um, because we think this is key for successful dashboards, because if this is a sales forecast with two values, you see it's two values, it's a low information density. And this is not what other disciplines are using to transform information. I would like to show you some examples. If we look at this um, little piece of music, these are seven values on, on, on this page. And this here already are 47. But when the musicians do it professionally, and we are professionals, so we do it in the same way, we need a higher information density. This is now 50 values uh, on this, on this uh, page. But if you compare it to typical dashboards, this is similar to what we have in dashboards, about 50 values. But uh, the musicians have a much higher information density, though they would even understand this if this is, you know, about this size and this number of 749 little values on, on, on this page. And the musician could take this bar and, and compare it to this one and discuss it. And it gives everyone the overview of this uh, Hungarian Rhapsody, just an example. May I interrupt uh, briefly, Rolf? It's not only that they understand it, 
they demand for it. A musician needs it. They want to have it. So it's not that that they are forced to look at that and they understand it. No, they want to have it that way. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You're, you're right. Actually, it's, isn't it funny that it took them four or five hundred years so that uh, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven and Mozart are using the same language? I mean, no musician today would say, say he is now creative, creating a new way of of notating uh, music, right? I mean, you are a musician, you, you know this. I mean, uh, yes. And, 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 and if you're a good, if, if you're a good musician, you even could play it right away and understand it and, and use it for your music, music, right? You understand. I mean, this is, you are the musician, I said, and, and, and you will understand what's here on this page. And I'm an engineer, and engineers like drawings too. And uh, also, the engineers don't use this low information, these here of, of two values, two parts on this page, but they do it this way. I mean, just see, it's this here is 350 parts on this page and easily, you know, can depict certain parts, explain them. And this is what engineers think is, is a high information density in order to understand the business. Okay, that's okay, too. And uh, if this is a part list, I mean, that's not only one part on this page. It's not 16. It might be almost 200. And everyone would be able to understand, you know, all the, the, these different parts and identify them, discuss them. This is information density. Okay. This is engineering. But let's, let's look at the maps. I mean, this is a map of Switzerland. And... Uh, this is about 211 labels here on this page. And you can easily find now your way uh, to your skiing resort starting in, in, in Zurich, okay? Also, high information density. Look at this map, there's, I didn't count it, but maybe there's around 5,000 little values, houses, roads, everything on this map. It's um, uh, lake Lucerne, and uh, there's a ferry across the lake, and it's easy to understand and to explain where this uh, ferry starts and, and, and ends, okay? Also, this, I think, is high information density, and it helps us to understand the world. Coming back to our dashboards. This is what people think is a, is a good dashboard. It has 50 values, right? This one has 64, this one has 157. And when you think that this page in, in, in full HD has around 2 million pixels, then we spend about 12,700 pixels per value. 12,700 times 157 uh, gives us these 2 million. Here, because it's only 16 values on this page, we need 106,000 pixels to, uh, let's say, describe one value. You remember Edward Tufte, the great Edward Tufte, he says it's, it's really information density. Uh, we will come back to this later. That helps us to understand And This is low information, only 16 values. What you are actually doing, Rolf, when it comes to Edward Tufti, you are calculating his data ink ratio. Huh? He has always been telling us, hey, use a high data ink ratio. What you are doing is an ink per data <laughs> ratio, uh, but actually it's the same. It's just uh, the other way around. Huh? It's, the ink data. it's the ink data ratio. Yes. It's not the data. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I think, but it's easy to understand. We need 100,000 pixels for one simple value. When I look at this 60 point font, which I'm using here, I mean, that's uh, uh, the 16 up there. Um, then we have what, 16,000 pixels for this value. If we go down to 10 point, which is a normal font size for dashboards, then we only use 2000 pixels per value. And if we have full HD, we would have place and type and, 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 and room enough for about a thousand values. These are 1000 little squares on this page. And this would be the 2000 pixels per value, which is quite, quite similar when we come back to our music 
they're using here 2700 but there is still some some white space and so they would get pretty close to these 2000 pixels per value okay so again this is what we are looking at and this is not the way we should design dashboards um i excuse me but i think we have to use this red cross here and especially these uh, sorry these stupid pie charts they have extremely low information information density and they're really so, not the best way of communicating so actually what you are telling us is that probably the visuals we are using are the reason why we have such a low information density so if we use pie charts for instance then we cannot get a higher information density is this one of the reasons why we have that low information density yeah probably i mean pie charts have, have several disadvantages it's difficult to compare it's a problem with the negative values and some others but i think well, let's let's look at the pie charts a little bit closer i've prepared i prepared a, a, a short presentation replacing pie charts with highly condensed dashboard visuals i think we can do better so when you look for type art by charts in a Google search, picture search, you get this. Well, sorry, I would like to convince you that in 99% of the cases, these are not the visuals we should use to for, for, for presenting data in business. And I've prepared a little uh, show of typical pie charts they could be rings or pie charts and some people place the, the the numbers in between but if you want to understand the data it is extremely difficult to understand what's been shown 19 20 21 22 how do you compare this and so it would be much easier if we if you use the simple uh, column charts uh, you see spain which is blue on the left hand side you see france you see greece and you see italy and you can compare the development group because that's what you want to see if you show uh, four pie charts or four rings you want to see the development not only the structure and here you can see the development we do not really need the colors we would save the colors for for more important things colors are uh, important for us but we don't spend them for for just identifying spain france and greece so we don't do it and now when if this is 100% of the size, we can now use 50%, half of it, and tell a little story. That means we go to maybe even 50%. I mean, you see the development. But if you have 100%, we could add data, more years, more months, more quarters, and then show developments. And these stacked columns show something, what's going on. Trends, highlight trends developments this is for me a good solution for using this given space and this here sorry to say is not it's not i mean there are some cases where pie charts are helpful Jung, what do you think Jung? well of course there are rare cases but the, the 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 biggest problem of pie charts is that you can't compare them as you have been showing you can't compare them so if we would find a way how we can compare pie charts probably if they i just saw the picture if they yeah, are I want arranged, to give you the hint yeah. where I'm, I'm looking at yeah yeah uh, so if they are arranged on a map then it probably works because then you can compare them yeah that's the map of regions in Germany and the size might give the information like like market size or something like this and then we could add the our portion our share of the market it would be a nice little chart a nice little chart to explain how about the, the size of the markets and our share in these markets okay this is let's say it's okay I mean, it's not a high information density, but it gives us a good overview mm. uh, of what's going on in Germany. Okay, so what did we learn so far? Pie charts are not wrong. They are 
bad when it comes to information density. You can't compare with them. There are better alternatives, as you have been showing, um, to increase information density and to compare things. Uh, but there, are, um, of course, there are exceptions, like if if you arrange yeah. them on a map or if you yeah. arrange them in in a kind of of, of uh, gross table, yeah. then probably they they would work somehow. Okay, but but well, you could could have let's say. 100 or 200 of these uh, market circles and showing our market share all over Europe and the, and the whole world. I mean, no problem to put 100 of these spies on the page. No problem. Mm. Right? Yes, sure. Sure. Um, okay. So, but is this the only chart type that you say, okay, it's the pie charts that have the problem with the information density or are there more chart types where you say, hey, we can do better? <laughs> Well, the worst, the worst one, you know, Jürgen, we've discussed this so often. The worst one are speedometers. <laughs> this is really something I, I, I think it is stupid. Speedometers are not made um, to display data. They are analog systems we may, might use in a car. But this kind of stuff, what you see here, if you look in, in, in Google for speedometer charts you see this and this has quite a lot of and and it's even worse probably the most popular tool out there is power bi and if you look at all those power bi dashboards yeah. it looks yeah. like power bi even pushes the use of i don't of, know of radio charts i think it is it is a stupid solution it is uh, is of no, no use and, and just look at these examples this is typical Sorry, I would say never again. Okay, okay, but but still, I would like to see what's wrong with with it from the perspective of information density. Hmm? Okay, let's let's. I, I have prepared um, uh, two examples. The, the one is uh, these gauge charts, which is some gimmick. You see them all over the now. It's um, showing one value more or less, maybe two values here, uh, using half of the page for four values or in these speedometers. I mean, uh, it's very similar. It's it's a gimmick right now to use these radio charts. And I would like to really suggest not using this stuff, really not because of, well, <laughs> let, me, let me explain you. If we have this, of course, we would like to compare these locations, right? I mean, that's the reason we put four of them on a page, but if you want to compare them, your eyes will look around and will have difficulties. The other problem is that we should not point into the red or green area, but highlight what is the variance or what if the difference to, to the goal of 100, right? This is one typical mistake in these, in, in, in these uh, uh, speedometers. But we could take this away. To, to make room for more, show only the variances, and then do the typical business user bar chart. And then you put this on this side, and you take Berlin, and you take Berlin, and you take Vienna. You make a little bit, maybe a little smaller, change the, change the scale, and here we are. And it's easy and using much less space. This is using 20%. And we're talking about information density or data density. So if we have the same space, 100% both cases, then I would suggest to increase the number of values. Compare, let's say, with forecast. The more advanced IBCS people will know, hatched is forecast. Solid uh, is actual. We could add data easily, easy to understand. And we could show some, some trends, some developments. And I think this is a, a quite good solution to show these variances to compare to whatever the goal is um, in these four locations. And this year, sorry to say, I, don't, I think it's just stupid. Sorry. So my suggestion is never again. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Rolf, um, while I think this is convincing, we have an interesting question on the chat. Um, 
Arun is asking, hey, um, isn't information dense visuals difficult to minimally trained business users? So um, if, if, if you have really dense information, probably the not trained user will have a hard time. And probably in this situation, it would be better um, also to go for pie charts or very low density and easy to understand visuals. What do you think about that? Well, what, let, let him compare the two examples here. I mean, I mean, on the right hand side, or going back a little, going, let's say, going, um, well, this way maybe only without the highlighting. I mean, uh, you see the variances. Do you think somebody will not understand what's on the right hand side? Is this his question? Not Does he think that the left hand side is easier to understand? I don't think so. Um, well, the question was uh, concerning pie charts, uh, but probably it's the same thing here with, well, uh, with the speedometers, the same. the same thing with the speedometers. But uh, even even if if it would be easier to understand, I think we should differentiate between those two different user groups. If you really have a user group that is not a business professional and is not frequently looking at reports and and probably just use it, it, it uh, or wants to look at it in a journal or in, in what magazine or wherever, then mm. probably then probably we don't have to or need such a high information density. But you started your presentation with the words, we are professionals. All the people out there, uh, especially the management people, the business people, the executives, C-level management, they are professionals. So they should be trained in, 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 in reading high information because they need the high information to to make decisions don't you agree well sure i mean when children start with four or five six years to play flute or piano or whatever uh, music instrument they, <laughs> this um, let's see this uh, sheet music looks like in kindergarten with little birds and, and mm -hmm. colors and going up and down and very low information density yeah. but we, we we saw it before i mean um the more information the more you put on the page the easier it is to get the overview i mean okay. this is the, that's our topic i mean if if you want to teach children you might use the left hand side right yes i mean <laughs> this is exactly what i wanted to say i think it's a perfect example the recorder lessons have a low information density but the conductor score of a professional conductor has a very high information density. And I think executives in business are more the conductor type than the recorder lesson children type. Oh, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. I come back to where we stop. There has been a suggestion by Stephen Few. He said, yes. well, yes, those speedometers take too much space. Let's have a shorter version or a smaller version, a, a, a more condensed version of, of uh, those speedometers. And this is what the bullet graph uh, yeah. is about. What do you think about the bullet graphs? Yeah. Well, they are better than speedometers, you see it here, but they have a potential for improvement. Um, I think Stephen Hugh has done a, a great job and there are a great, great ideas and example of his dashboards. I like them. High information density is one of his uh, his key goals too, but this year I do not like. You said why? Well, there are several reasons. I would I would uh, wrap it up briefly. Um, first thing is we need I think to compare different values like revenue margin and stock. We have to normalize it to a to a hundred percent or whatever goal. This is not good to compare because then you see don't see the percentage variances. Secondly, we should highlight whatever is the variance. This is the major goal in our IBCS examples. Red and green are only there, okay, for the uh, color deficient people, maybe it's red and blue, but most people understand red and green from the traffic signs, then this could be highlighted. And these gray shaded areas, I think we do not really need. And we can make it simpler. 
show it. And I think for me, this is a easy to understand whatever, you know, the, the ratio, its percentage or whatever here the, 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 the values are. And this here, to be sorry, I, I do not really like so much. Maybe it's a question of personal taste. Uh, Jürgen, we are the ones with the, you know, with the, <laughs> the red and green variances. I prefer this. Okay. Okay, I, I, I think this has only been a, 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 a short uh, discussion on that. I, I would like to continue directly with a question that is in the chat. Uh, Fabio asks, hey, um, it, it seems to be so obvious that higher information density is needed to show the context and to make right decisions. So why is it still so hard, so difficult to convince people? Uh, um, why do they still want to have those low density things even on executive dashboards? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that is really incredible. I mean, when you, we don't touch that is here now in, in our discussion, but when you go into Google Pixel shows and look for great dashboards, we, maybe at the end, we can have a look at that. Yeah, but <laughs> me, this is, it is incredible. I mean, this is, for me, not understandable. I'm, I mean, Ross, I the, have, I have an idea why, why that is. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's because they are not trained. They are not trained. If a, if a conductor would never have seen a conductor's core before if he is not able to read and write music notes then he is also confused if we if we show him a conductor's core so probably we need some education to show the people that we can do better and then we need to train them in this let's say visual language and high condensed yeah. visual stuff and at a certain point of time they will say oh this is much better than what I had before. I want to continue with that. I mean, Jürgen, you remember, I mean, years ago before this dashboard issue came up, we made this uh, these PowerPoint uh, trainings. I remember this. And then there were some examples when instead of using 100, 150 slides, we could condense them to eight, nine, or 10, but spend 10 times as much time per slide. And this is exactly the same thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, having a presentation of one hour and looking at 150 slides is almost impossible to understand. But if you have one hour and you have six slides, you spend 10 minutes on, on each slides. Yeah, and sure. then you understand the business. But yes. Um, and, and if you look at the visuals we just had, this is not the worst thing we can have. There are even worse <laughs> yeah. visuals. Yes. You, you know what I'm, we, yeah. we discussed this before. I mean, uh, there's one that is terrible. Yeah, so go for that. Yeah, this is terrible. This is big numbers. You know, these tiles with big numbers. These big number tiles, I show you some examples. This is here on the, on the, on the left-hand side, this year, or this year, or this year. <laughs> I think it is so funny. I mean, you see the big numbers. This is no visual at all. They call it the visual, but it's not a visual. And look at these brutal green uh, orange red sorry <laughs> this is not what we need to understand the business i would really think this is absolutely sorry nonsense nonsense useless sorry why look at microsoft microsoft says uh, these um, tiles you know these tiles to see I mean, if you would have a smaller uh, screen resolution, you wouldn't even understand that this is GDP because it is um, one tenth of the size of the number, which it is. Uh, I don't understand that. I mean, uh, it's really not understand. But when they say card visualizations are a good way to display an important number prominently. So the bigger the number is, the more important the number is. Uh, but they say um, here, I mean, if you take this, but be sure to provide context. And this is what we're doing now. We take this, the GDP thing, and use our standards, black for actual, 
see the development here, GDP and Vellum in, in thousand dollars, whatever, I don't go in the details now. We could show uh, differences, we could show variances, absolute percentage. And then this is for me, you know, providing context. And we could use this space. And this is okay for me, okay? And this is not. So when we look at these uh, dashboards, we could easily replace the GDP thing here with this little chart or change it because it's percentage, it might look different. Of course, we have a different concept for absolute values than the percentage values and stuff like this. But uh, this is okay, I think. And again, sorry if I, I don't want to offend someone, but I personally think this is stupid. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Rolf. Um, now that we probably half an hour have been bashing on, on, on several chart types, the question is, how can we do better? Um, of course, you always showed how to turn a, 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 a specific chart type into something better, but probably we could start right from scratch with something better. Yeah. So if you don't want to turn a pie chart or a radio chart um, into something else, but you would start on, uh, let's say a clean sheet and you just would create something with a high information density, how would you do that? Well, I think variance charts um, are a, a typical application in, in, in accounting, controlling, and, and business data, because it's always about variances um, that uh, which are important. So let's make, make an example here. We show here the June. Can, can you see my, my pointer? The, the June data. We. Uh, it works with your pointer, Rolf. Yes, it works. It works. Yeah. And we have here the underscore June, which means June year to date. That means until here the June and this is the rest of the year forecast hatched and we could uh, add data sorted here uh, by the annual values we could um, show more you know more countries here or even the rest of Europe becomes smaller and smaller um, could let's say the, the, the Delta previous year, Adam, just click through the different variances, you know, that means June and, and, and the accumulated value and the year. I just showed, of course, then we could switch from here the, uh, to, to the uh, percentage values, uh, the relative values, they are, this is absolute and this is relative. We could make it smaller. I just click briefly through this uh, little uh, presentation. And here we're using, a font size, because font size is is the the major and, and basic question for information density. I mean, the font size defines how much we can put on one page. I mean, if we're using uh, 24 points, it is difficult. But here we have 8.5 points. I think if you have a regular screen, even on your, on, on your small uh, notebook, you can see this, right? I mean, this is possible. Um, and then we can make it smaller. That means these 100, it says 111 values are here. 6.5 point still work. Maybe not on, on your, let's say iPhone, but here on this screen it works. And then we have 39 values, make it even smaller, smaller. I mean, we make it as small as possible in order to compare this now with the resolution we had before. This I think is about the same resolution using this 6.5 point uh, font here. But then we can add them, but this is only a dummy. You see, it's always the same values. I made it, I made it easy, just copy, 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 156 values. Here we have almost 500. Okay, this is now, 12 times as much information as we had before. So if we would have spent, let's say, half a minute on one of these uh, charts, 
which is probably necessary to understand, or 30 seconds, here we would have 12 times as much time. And we could easily depict variances, differences, compare them. This is information density. We could discuss things and take five minutes, 10 minutes to explain whatever is important on this page. And I would like to come back. Uh, to... Just a moment before you yeah. come back. There is a question out there that we probably should answer immediately because yeah. there is someone asking, uh, where is it? Um, yeah, it's Abhishek. Um, he says, well, it seems all to be custom visuals. Hey, uh, Rolf, you are here suggesting things that, uh, this is my interpretation. It seems to be all custom visuals. Uh, what, what my interpretation means, Rolf, you are showing things that I'm not able to do with standard Excel or standard Power BI. Is that right? Well, he can come to our Excel courses and learn how to do this with Excel. <laughs> No, the get bidding is serious. I mean, uh, we have certified now, how many are there? 10 or 11? 12 products. 12 already. Uh, they can do exactly what's here. It's okay. Okay, I agree. I mean, it's a tool question. I mean, if we don't have the tools, it doesn't work. You can't draw it with PowerPoint. And still, I think we are the customers. So if Power BI doesn't do that natively or SAP or whatever, Cognos tool doesn't do that natively, we have to tell them, hey guys, yeah. uh, you software vendors, this is what I want to have because I want to have a high information density. Would you please create this type of chart? Well, it's the same with maps. It's the same with these technical drawings we saw before. The architect is, is using uh, computer-aided tools. I mean, the musician, I mean, you have done so much work in music, Jürgen, you know the, and you know all these tools, how to produce produce this music. Uh, I mean, without tools, it doesn't work. I agree. And there are nice solutions based on uh, SAP, Excel, uh, Power BI, whatever, what have you. There are tools out there and yeah. we need the tools. No question. I think it is absolutely necessary because you also want to drill down, look around, compare and change uh, comparison. This here is a comparison. Uh, whoever knows the, the the notation compared to previous year it would be outlined it would be here these triangles if it would be uh, compared to plan and stuff like this okay but this is necessary i mean without tools no way no way okay is this uh, enough yeah. explanation i think sure uh, yeah. excel pure excel doesn't help us no okay i would like to finish this now uh, with the the first a chart what i said about uh, a dashboard i think this is more or less a reasonable um, dashboard but and this is not and this has let's say 100 times or 200 times as as many data this is not what we're looking for right Okay, but, but if this is not what we are looking for, you know, the dashboards you have been showing before with those, let's say, 50 data points and 76 data points or something like that, the typically dashboards we see today, I have the feeling that we cannot add additional visuals, additional data points, and so on. They would immediately be kind of overloaded. Yeah. So... Um, What's the difference between what you suggest for those dashboards yeah. and what we have with the common dashboards out there? Okay, I think one important thing is font size because we don't make it as big as possible. If you you learn sometimes, you, you should use a 14 or 18 point uh, font. I would make it as, use the font as small as possible. Let's say, let's say 10 point is normal, maybe going down to uh, to eight or what we said, even even six point five. Remember uh, the big not not sure six point five, but probably eight or eight, 10, eight yeah. or ten, eight or ten. But even using eight or ten is much smaller as a typical dashboard when you when you look at the examples um, the developers provide for us. Okay, this is one one thing. Second, I mean, if the visuals are not really suiting our needs like you know these pie charts and and, and the, these radar charts and, and all this stuff i mean then these visuals need so much space i mean look at these these speedometers these these gauges we had before i mean you use i mean 10 percent of the screen for only one value okay then it's difficult 
So I think, well, I think it's also necessary to have some rules behind. I mean, we have to agree on the colors. We have to agree on the scales, but this is our success concept. I mean, people who know uh, IBCS know that we have these seven rule sets. Information density is only one of them. I mean, there are six others like scaling and uh, message and all this kind of stuff. If you're interested, you have to look on our website. But um, when we talk about information density only, it's font size and it's some rules which we have to obey. Like the musicians, I mean, we have five lines mm -hmm. and that's it. Not seven, not 10, it's five lines and everything so this, is... Yeah, this is the semantic notation part, actually. So um, those two things belong together. You need a semantic notation, right. so a visual language, and, and then you can start increasing information yeah. density. It's the same the musicians do. Um, yeah. They have a standardized, the electrical engineers, the only reason why they can increase the information density that far is because they use a, a, a let's say, a visual language. I mean, just look at an electrical uh, plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, worldwide, uh, these uh, these symbols, a, a bulb, a, a transistor, or, or resistant. I mean, they are worldwide looking the same. I mean, it is it is it is. We're just. I think we are just too early in in this business. I mean, the musicians it took them a few hundred years to get there. Yeah, I think three four hundred years. And can you tell us? Can you tell us a little about what you mean with semantic notation? So, well, um, yeah. I prepared this one chapter. Uh, semantic notation is key for highly condensed dashboard visuals. I think it's, and I would like to start with you know the the, the intro pictures. We started here, uh, highly condensed dashboard visuals, and uh, come to these uh, three symbols here. And I mean, the more advanced IPCS people, they know this is actual, it's solid and dark, gray or black. And this is outlined and everything which, which is outlined is planned. And this is a forecast, it's something in between. It's, it's, it's not yet a full black, full solid, and it's not outlined. I think uh, many, many of the people attending will know this. This is one, of these, let's say, 100, or is it 50? I don't know, Jürgen. How many do we have? 50 of these or 20? I don't know. I really I, don't know. But I, I, I show I, you the I, most I, important ones. Yeah, I think it's not too many. So probably 20, 25 uh, for basic, this notation part. Yeah. Basic ones, but then yeah. there are the more advanced ones. Uh, yeah. Okay, but on our poster, there are 96, right? So, I mean. but uh, Well, but, but what we are talking about notation only here. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah, the semantics is maybe maybe 10 or so, 20, mm -hmm. yeah. Let, let me show the three most important ones, okay? This is one, actual plan, forecast, uh, budget, uh, and whatever you know, the, different, the different scenarios are. The next one is, and this is also very simple to, to, to follow, but very important too. Time is always from left to right with a horizontal axis, lines or columns or whatever, areas. And structure, that means countries, uh, locations, projects, stuff like this, it's always the vertical axis. And these two are 90% of the analyses we see in, in dashboards, okay? And then there's another one that's red and green. We discussed it already. And absolute variances and relative variances. Absolute are these bars or columns, solid. And there is uh, these, these pins where the pin heads um, say something and the axis here is gray. It says previous year, stuff like this. This is going into the details, but this is probably the most important. I mean, the scenarios, red and green, variances, and time and structure. Maybe a good title concept and, and some, some more. I think 10, 10 of these rules are, are sufficient to start with. And then it looks like this. I mean, these are examples not really high condensed, highly condensed, but these are examples how it looks like. You see the needles, you see the variances, forecast. And um, yeah, I mean, this is what we can do. And uh, if it's not sufficient, if you think you put more, uh, more information uh, on this uh, screen, then you use these, 
these um, small multiples. I mean, with small multiples, you can easily have 500, 600, 800 values on one page. Yeah. Well, okay. well, this coming back, I would like to come back to the, uh, let's say, Chamber of Horrors. I, I, I'm not polite when I say this, but this for me is Chamber of Horrors. Mm -hmm. well, they all, I look for sales dashboards. And they are all sales dashboards, but there's not two. They have the same notation. Mm -hmm. So this is not what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's now your turn. I think you have to finish this and, and, and tell me how to uh, continue this. And I would like to come back to our start picture. Highly condensed dashboards, visuals. Uh, what can you, what can we offer to go in this direction if some people are interested to go this way? Okay, Bef before we close this session with a kind of call to action, um, I would like to have a closer look to the chat. Um, there are interesting discussions going on. So some people say, well, you know, um, one of the reasons, or uh, actually it's two comments, uh, two reasons they mention uh, for this type of dashboards and visuals in dashboards. One is that uh, this is what is provided by the software vendors. So if it's prominently provided by the software vendors, so is, if Power BI says, well, this is the ultimate thing to show yeah. things in radar chart, then people are using it. This yeah, is right. one thing. And the second thing, and this is an interesting one, is that the consultants doing the job of, of um, creating those dashboards, they probably have an easier time if they sell um, those funny um, things out there. Um, it's harder to convince your customer to do something um, different from probably what he is, expects, instead of just using those fancy things, he is told from software vendors and others that this is great. I'm not sure. What do you think about those? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think, Jürgen, we have been in this business now for, for 20 years, 20 years. I, I've been in hundreds, really hundreds of companies. And if we are not able to say, this is your present solution, how you do it in reports, dashboards, PowerPoints, whatever. And here is how we suggest to do it. And my, my goal is that if you show this to 10 people, you know, the before and after, and nine or 10 of 10 should say the after is better than before. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, uh, we don't do a good job. And just see, I mean, how many companies, what do you think, Jürgen? I, I'm not really updated now. How many people are thinking about IBCS and the issues now? Thousands, aren't there? there well, many well thousands. In, in, in Central Europe, in, in the German-speaking countries, I think it's probably even the majority of, of people out there, to a certain degree, not 100%, but in a certain to, to a certain degree, they, they, they know about all the things and they would say, let's move into that direction. Internationally, it's probably no, not di no, that not disseminated, exactly. yeah. but, but in, in total, I would agree, thousands of companies, thousands. Yeah. yeah. And maybe hundreds of thousands of people at least know about it. It's difficult. Of, okay, that's that's another issue. That would be <laughs> would be a topic of another uh, webinar, another training discussion. Um, how to change things? Uh, because I mean, I've experienced that if the CFO, the CEO, the, the, the owner or board member is really convinced, it takes a few months, maybe a year, to change this. But if you start at the very bottom on, on, on level five or six of a large organization, it takes mm -hmm. years. I mean, we have met people now, last week, Jürgen, I mean, 12 years ago, I was in your training, remember? <laughs> and, and now we are starting to for a project uh, about IBCS. Okay, that's yeah. the, the real yeah. world. That's how it is. Okay, there is another com uh, um, a comment, which is interesting, um, who, who says, well, um, the visualization is one thing, but I, I observe that on top of that, also the wording, the data story, some text, if you, especially if you are conveying a message, uh, this is the same mess. Uh, yes. Wouldn't it be great to have also some kind of, of rules for that? Yeah. 
Okay, Mane, there's a concept called IBCS and the success concept. I think the, to my personal opinion, the two letters in the beginning at the end, that means say the message and the first S in the success and the last one structure are for me the most important ones. This visual stuff is nice, but much more important is the story you tell. I mean, this is, and the story, you have to learn this. I mean, you know, I, I, all of this I've learned uh, during my time at McKinsey. I mean, they, they train their people uh, how to write stories and how to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's not so easy. I mean, uh, but I think we need a message, the right structure, the light, the right argumentation. And then once we have this, we need the right visuals to, to, to transport this. Especially, but I, I agree completely. Yeah. For me, message, structure, text, content, content, uh, but, but you statements, know. Uh, suggestions. Uh, yeah. This but, is the most important thing. I mean, a, a header called sales report is not really helpful, right? But aren't we then talking about a different type of report? Because this then is a report conveying a message. So after you've done your analysis, you try to convey your findings. Yeah. Uh, and then you have a message and you try to visualize yeah. that. But today, we have been talking about highly condensed dashboard visuals. So isn't dashboard the other type of report, a report that you use as a kind of, let's say, data collection for finding out? So, so um, can you imagine a dashboard with this kind of of message type um, reports, visuals in there? Well, I'm, I mean, let's come back to this to this uh, picture, I think. I mean, I really, really honestly do not understand that any CFO, CEO, or C-level people or the two top level people will ever look at this kind of stuff. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. They are used to have an assistant or people around they tell them what's going on and they usually use, you know, language or maybe some PowerPoints explaining complicated things. Mm. I have no idea that any, let's say, um, manager, senior people would, would use this kind of stuff. No, no. Okay. They are so used that somebody explains them something yeah. and I'm coming back to say and message. Yeah. Um, but but what you're saying, sense. Rolf, what you're saying is then for this type of reports, we still have more PowerPoint and yeah. less the, 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 the Power BI stuff out there. Probably this will change in future and things are then connected together. But so far, it's, it's, yeah. it's a different thing. Well, I mean, this, these storytelling approaches, which have started a couple of three years ago, I mean, this trying to combine the two things. I'm using dashboards. Uh, adding messages, telling a story step by step. I mean, this is maybe the way for the future. But again, I mean, before I do a good presentation, a good dashboard, I have to know the needs of the customer, the needs of, of my clients. And I have to understand the business and find interesting uh, stories. Otherwise, these dashboards are of no use, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. This is uh, this is not uh, what I think we should continue. We need a concept. We need a notation concept, um, and and then we are going in the right direction. Okay. So and we started to go there by introducing highly condensed dashboard visuals and by explaining that a a consistent visual language we call it notation probably is a precondition or at least helps us doing so. So we are at the end of our webinar. Um, so uh, I would like to invite you for two things. First of all, go to ibcs.com and register. Because if you go to ibcs.com and register, you will get an email. And with this email, you get a coupon code to download the standards for free. 
Actually, you can read the standards for free on our website. It's a Creative Commons, a Wikipedia type of approach. So you have it already for free and online. But if you want to have the book, it's 160 pages in PDF format. Please register and you can download it. I really invite you to do so if you didn't do that yet. And the second thing I would invite, and now Rolf, I ask you to press, is to go on that website, ibcs.com, and look at the seminars page. So ibcs.com slash seminars, or you press the training button um, on, 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 on the website. Um, next one, yes, the ibcs.com slash seminars. Um, there you also find our um, uh, next uh, training session we have an ibcs certified analyst course starting next week so it's five half days evening days for central europe um, um it's it's morning or afternoon in in the americas depending on whether you are eastern or uh, on the west coast so um uh five half days um of of ibcs training starting october the third so we would be more than happy to see you there and uh, go for ibcs.com and register on the website. Rolf, it was a pleasure as always to have you with us and uh, for the, our audience, they stay with us for one hour, which is, is a, a great sign. Um, I think they are happy that they had the chance to listen to you again and hear from the the the, the let's say the originator of the IBCS standards, why okay. you think why you think that high information density is key and that a standard notation helps doing that. Thank you, Rolf. And thank you guys out there. Hope you to see you in the near future. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao.